Hey, welcome back. And now all of the fun begins because we get to code JavaScript. I've also adjusted my container height to 400 pics, so it fits better within my small screen here on the right-hand side. So going into the index.html, we're gonna write the JavaScript within the script tags. The first thing we wanna do is select our main container so that we can access it and utilize it within our code. So it's doing a document and using query selectors. So there's a number of different ways that you can make your selection of the element. And in this case, we can use query selector, selecting it by the class and selecting the element with the class of container. So just uh, refresh. And usually the way that I like to do that is just to make sure that I did get the container properly. So it does look like I have co the container within the container object. Also, we need to get its dimensions. Uh, so this is an option that we're going to also make use of the width and the height so it can make it more dynamic. So taking that container object that we just created, we're going to apply a method called get bounding client rectangle. And this is going to give us the height and width and all the dimensions that we need. So I'm going to just call it con dim. So we'll refresh and output the values of con dim. And this is going to be within an object format. So we can select any one of these properties such as bottom height, left, right, top, width by doing con dim dot width dot top dot right dot left. So all of these are now available to us that we can use in our coding when we make some calculations for where we need to position different elements as well as uh, where off screen is and so on. So we need all of this information. So next let's create some elements and we need one game over element. And this is gonna be where we can start the game as well as what's gonna show when the game is over. So using create element, this is a div, just go ahead and create a div. So we've got that game over object and we haven't added it to the page yet. We need to still add a few other things, but we've got an empty div. It's not anywhere on the page yet, so we haven't added it to the page quite yet. Let's add in some content into here. So text content, and for now we'll type in start game. And we might wanna change this throughout the game. So if we want to add in a class, if we had a particular styling, we could do that at this point as well. And I'm gonna do as much as possible with JavaScript. So sometimes this is the longer way to do this, but of course this is a JavaScript course, so we're gonna take the longer route and create all of the style attributes. So positioning it absolute and game over again. So game over style, adding in the color and the color that we want for the font is white. And the next one that we wanna do is set the line height. So this will allow us to position content in the middle so make it really big. We'll make it at 300 picks. We also have text align, and that can be center. So we can center the text content. There's also font size that we need to apply. So font size, and I'll make this fairly big as well, so 3EM. You can also transform. So text transform is another option, and we'll transform it to uppercase. So now we've got quite a bit of stuff going on there. I'm gonna add it to the page so that we can see as we're building it out, so container, append child and the child that we want to append is that game over div that we've just created so let's refresh and see what it looks like so we've got our start game there and we also should add a background color so that we can actually see it so make this red so try that one more time so there we've go we've got our start game also let's uh, adjust some width to it so sometimes this is easier to actually output it on the page and then add in the styling so again refresh and once you've got it to how you want it uh, then you're ready to move along and the other elements. So right now, I think this is pretty good. Uh, we've got start game. We've got a nice big clickable area to start the game. So let's thing, and this one, we're gonna add in an event listener to it. So add event listener, and the event that we're gonna listen for is click. And when it gets clicked, then we're gonna run a function called start game. And so for now, this is just gonna be a placeholder function. So go down at the bottom, and create that function. It's not gonna do anything yet. We'll output into the console, and just to make sure that everything is working properly, we start game, we get started in the console. So that's what we wanted. There's a few other things that we need to add in, a few other elements that we wanna add in before we complete this lesson. So a lot of it is gonna be very similar where we're gonna add in another element. So we've got the game over start button, and we're gonna to have to create a ball, and this is gonna be the gameplay ball that's gonna move around that the player is gonna hit, and it's gonna move and hit the blocks and remove the blocks and so on. So instead of query selector, because we don't have that element, we, use, we need to use create element. And this gives us again the ability to create the element 
In this case, let's create another div. Selecting the ball object, just as we did the game over element. And first let's set the position. So we're gonna set the position to absolute. And this one's not gonna be as complex as the game over, but somewhere down the line, I do wanna add it to the main container. So selecting the container, we're gonna append child and the child that we're gonna append is gonna be ball. So we're able to see it. And also I'm gonna update the container background color to be a slightly darker color. So I'll set it to a dark gray. And so we refresh. So that will give us the ability to see the ball. So going back in and we've appended the ball, but we don't have anything quite yet happening on the ball. So ball style again, and we can set a width of that. So this one's gonna be relatively small and you can adjust this as needed, of course. So we've got a width, we have a height for the ball. And this is gonna be again, the same 20 picks and can't see anything yet. Uh, let's do a ball background color. And we're also gonna add, attach an image to this ball. We'll make it a tennis ball. So that will be kind of neat. So for uh, without the image, it'll just be a white ball. So we've got, doesn't actually look like a ball, it's square. So we need to take care of that, of course we need to apply border radius. And border radius is what rounds it in CSS, if you're familiar with CSS. Uh, so it can do 25 pick border radius. Let's uh, refresh. So now we've got a ball. Uh, next thing we wanna do, I do have a URL that I do have within here where I've got a PNG image, that's a ball. So let's attach that one to our image. And again, it's the same thing where we're applying and updating the style attribute, the color, we can set a background image. And the format for the background image is, again, you quote around the value, and then we specify that we're going to ball PNG and refresh, and that should attach the tennis ball in there. And this image is slightly bigger, so I wanna center this as well. And the way to do that, uh, we can do the ball style again. So I know we're setting quite a bit of style here. And background size is the one that we're looking for. So we're setting the height and width, so 20 picks by 20 picks. And now we've got more of a tennis ball. It's all there, uh, sitting there within the tennis ball. And that's just the PNG file that I have there. So that's where that's coming from. And if this is optional, you don't have to make it a tennis ball unless you want, uh, but it's always good practice to become very familiar with what you can do with the style and all the different options that you have within style. And also maybe by default, we wanna take the ball once we've built it and we've created it the way that we want it to look, we're gonna apply display none. And then once the game starts, then we're gonna show the ball because it doesn't make a lot of sense that the ball would be sitting there on top of the start game. So that would be kind of confusing for the user. So let's hide that. And we can also position the ball. And this is also going to get dynamically adjusted, but it's always good to just have a starting position. So this can be pretty much anything we want. I'm going to set it to 70% and ball style and left position. This one can again be anything that we want because we are going to be setting this dynamically using JavaScript. So now we've got our ball. We're all ready to go with the ball. When I refresh it, it should be gone. We've got display none. And we have one more element that we want to create. And I know we've gotten lots of practice in this lesson, creating elements and updating their style attributes. So it's always good practice. And I do promise you this is the last one. And I'm going to go super quick on this one, creating the element, because a lot of this is going to be a repeat. And you are welcome to try this on your own afterwards and just make some style adjustments. Get used to all the different options that you have when you create an element and styling them all using JavaScript. So again, doing the style and we can add in. So if we had any CSS styles, we could add them in here as well, but we don't have anything. Uh, we're doing this all with JavaScript. So first thing we wanna do is set its position and its position, just like the other ones, is gonna be absolute. I'm gonna append it to the container so that we can see it as we're developing it. So that's paddle is the object. Let's update some of the other position, the other properties. So it's paddle style and of course, background color. So we'll set it to white height and we're gonna set height to 20 picks. Setting width to 150 picks. I wanna round it a little bit, so border radius. And we'll position it at bottom position and also a left position, so we have a horizontal and we can center it, so 50%. So let's see what that looks like. So do a quick refresh. So there's our paddle and we are all ready to go. Maybe we wanna make it smaller. So it doesn't matter. And you can adjust these as needed to improve the gameplay. So for this case, it does look like the paddle was rather large. Let's set it to hundred picks and we can always adjust this afterwards. 
So go ahead and try this out, create a few elements, create the game over, the ball and the paddle, and you're gonna be ready to move on to the next part where we're gonna make some action, something happen with this game. So that's still to come.